This is the Viva sketchbook and it's the premium handmade sketchbook. Um, this is a square cotton 7.5 times 7.5 inches and it has uh, 40 pages, 20 sheets so you can use both sides of the page. It's made from 100% cotton paper, it's 300 GSM, uh, it's cold press and acid free. So let's open this up. It's made from a uh, full, full leather, um, meaning it's not like actual leather because Therefore, it's uh, vegan, right? And it fo it's supposed to open up fully and it's handmade. So it's made in India, uh, in Nashik, the same place that makes um, the, the, the papers. The logo of Viviva Colors is printed at the bottom. There's a strap um, that you can use to hold the, the book together, the pages together. It opens up um, totally flat. This is a normal sketchbook where you actually can't lay it flat right over here as you can see and a v the Viviva sketchbook you can open it up and you can it's it's totally flat so I think what they did was they detach this part normally for a book they would actually attach the spine you know the back the backing to the spine of the book but this one they separated it so we can just open it flat I think this is kind of a nice thing that they did. I find that the first page, uh, it's a different paper, provides like a little cover for, for the actual sketchbook that you, you, you see, that you use. And then once you turn this out, you will actually get to the paper. And interestingly, if you look at the texture of the paper, it is, it's supposed to be cold press, but I find it's so, so, so rough. <laughs> so yeah, it's my first time using something so rough. And I, I, I think I would like to also point out um, they, they really seem to be handmade because can you see all these imperfections? You see all these different imperfections um, on every page. Like generally you see a, a, a kind of a, a pattern, but you see all these imperfections, which is I think kind of interesting because you know, you, you, when you paint, you, know, you, you can get a little bit of a difference. And it's just kind of interesting. Over here you do get a little speck here. Um, so yeah, it's, it, and you see this one here that is like a little bit, so it's that, there is imperfection in, in the pages, but it, it's just a little bit more different. It's different and it's more organic. And at the back, you do have a, a pocket for you to put stuff, okay? Uh, but there isn't like, unlike here, like having this page, right, the particular, this cover page, there's no cover page at the end. So this, you can still use this, but this would really be like the end of it. So yeah, this is how it is constructed. So in the next set segment, I will share with you how it performs um, in, in, in all these like tests that I normally do for watercolor paper. Firstly, I just want to clarify that I, I, I'm an ink and wash uh, person. So I, I do a lot of pen work and then ink and watercolor on top. Um, so I'm, I'm actually approaching this from the point of view of a, a, a sketcher who do, do, does a ink and wash technique. So the first test that I actually look at is the, the interaction um, of, of the pens, different types of pen, different permutation, you know, a, a, a test of pen uh, ink onto this paper. So for this, I need to have uh, two pens. So I have my representative pen for tin nib, which is the um, carbon ca platinum carbon pen over here. Um, and then I also have a, it, the nib is tiny. It's like extra fine nib, so it's super thin. Um, and it's sometimes very hard to, to use it because it might, uh, you know, it can, it can be a little bit more uh, scratchy. And then I have this super thick nib and this is from uh, Mont Blanc, which is the, uh, the Fude nib, right? The one that we have been, I have reviewed recently. So we are going to do it uh, in two ways in such. So first, there are a few permutations to it. So firstly, um, I would be trying out different speed of uh, writing, fast and slow, and then the nib size, so thin and thick, and then also be using it like um, uh, you know with no watercolor uh, on it yet, and then overall watercolor. And I'm gonna start with the thin first, so I'm just gonna do thin all the way, so thin with fast. Uh, so I I think the problem with thin nib sometimes is that it gets very scratchy. Um, and it's very difficult, it can get like skips. So I'm quite impressed, like I could get this to work really fast. Like I didn't really get much skips, okay? And then if we do this slowly, I think we probably can do this quite slowly and there wouldn't be any issue. So the thing about doing slowly is whether it would cause bleeding or feathering through, you know, um, to the other side, which I think it's fine. 
So as you can see, it's working quite well. And now I'm going to use do this on the uh, part that has already have some watercolor on. And so far, I think it's not causing me any more problem than yeah, it's not causing me much of a problem. Even when I do it slow, I think there's slight feathering, as you can see. Um, but other than that, I think that is so much it. And I don't really get like um the amazingly that I think the ink dries pretty fast. I'm not sure if that's related to the ink that I'm using. The ink that I've used with this is the Platinum Carbon Black ink, okay? And I'm going to use the thick nib, which is uh, the Mont Blanc uh, Fude. I think it's called it's the, uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> so I'm going to do fast. Okay, and I think the skip is more the fact that you actually have a lot of the, um, you know, the grids because there's some pattern and some texture to the paper. So I'm just a little bit worried about it, the slowness of it, like whether I would have feathering. Um, and like bleeding through on the other side so that is something so yeah as you can see um, the more ink that I have um, the more of it does not dry but then again it could be, could be because of the ink because the ink that I'm using here with the Mont Blanc is their permanent black ink so I'm just going to do it really quickly over here as well so I think there's not much change I get some of this texture but that's because um, of the actual texture that's on the paper itself. So same. I'm going to just try to do the same thing. Yeah, so you, you actually see that they are very, very similar. Let's check if it bled through to the other side. Nope. Okay, so it's a thick paper. There's no bleeding. So it does not bled through. Uh, works okay. So I think the only issue here is uh, with the pen and uh, ink and wash using pen for drawing is that the texture can be a little bit hard for you to produce really straight lines. So if you're the kind who likes very, very detailed work and fine lines and you want the lines to be absolutely uh, neat, this is not the paper for you because it, it has texture. Um, but it's not so bad. I don't get quite, I don't get a lot of skips. The next test, the uh, granulation test, right? And also, this is also where I test whether the paper warps and buckles. So far, it's it's okay. Like when it when you paint it, like when it's really wet, it does buckle quite a lot. But then, um, I think if you close it, it's after drying, and you close it, it will flatten out. So it's there's no issue. It does not it does not remain buckled. So it's fine. As you can see from the granulation test, it is it granulates and it separates out really really nicely. So you can see that um, that this is two ways. I, I actually put water first and then and then paint in. And this is Vega. So Vega is like a separating watercolor where there's actually two pigments and they separate out differently because um, of the weight of the pigment and the size of the pigment. And this is when I actually just paint a strip of the, the mixture and I put water to kind of let the color like run, the pigment run. So you see this interaction separates up really nicely, gets some of blooms as well. And other tests that I do for watercolor would be um, lifting, layering, and uh, edges. I think they are kind of similar because they are the interaction of how paint uh, uh, can be like a manipulated, manipulated in, on the paper. And what I found is that this paper is kind of delicate that like you can't really do a lot of things to it like it's not suitable for like heavy lift so as you can see um, for lifting i have two pa two paints this is um easy to lift no problem with that but for dioxazine there is some piling after i kind of scratch it a little bit too much um so be very careful you can't lift you can't like you can't use a paint brush and go over many many times you're gonna get this this is gonna happen and then even for the edges, so this is, it's fine if it's fresh, but when it's totally dry and you try to like, can you see the puck, <laughs> the pile, the little pile paper pile, this, it's kind of like sticking there. So just be very careful with the surface. I would suggest not really doing too much, like paint goes in um, and try not to do too much with it. You might add a second layer, so second layer is okay. Try try not to do too many layers with this one. Um, I also look at the, the intensity of colors, like whether the colors pop. So this color, this paper, it's different. It's slightly more um, uh, ivory. It's an ivory color. So as you can see, the colors are not too bright, um, but I, I think you can still see the difference. Um, and I also did uh, with the 
the gouache, color pencil, and also did with ink. So for ink, I don't think it's suitable for ink because it, it does not really show a lot. You don't get to see all the properties um, with this paper. Like the sheening, I don't see a single sheen here. Shimmer is there, right? You see a bit of like the, the multicolor and you do see, for multicolor ink, you do see a bit of, of it, but it's, it's really very dependent on, on the, the patent and it's not very organic. Um, and we regarding in regards to uh, gouache and watercolor in color pencils, I think it's the, the the texture as well. You can't really get a very smooth application with gouache. This is gonna get get this kind of effect. Um, yeah, and for for color pencils, it's gonna be even more obvious. So I I actually devised two other tests, two other tests uh, to look at how delicate the paper is. First is to is the masking fluid test. So what I did was I just put masking fluid onto the paper. And let's try to kind of lift this out and see whether it will kind of oh, affect the paper. Seem like it will. So as you can see, can you see like when I'm trying to lift this off, uh, I might pull out some. You see, I might pull out and I might pull out some. Um, this is the, the, if I'm not wrong, this is the De La Roni uh, masking fluid. So you might pull out some of the surface. So just be very careful when you use uh, masking fluid. You know how we always use uh, like a masking tape uh, to tape the edges? All right, and there is also another test. I tape the edge. You, if I tear to, try to tear this part out, can you see that it does, like if you actually use it or you press too hard, you can get some of that paper coming out. So yes, be very careful how you use this paper because it is quite delicate, right? So this is the piece that I've done. I did a painted a pad thai and I used um, the color that was provided by Viviva. So it's I used the uh, Viviva watercolor set for this. You can see a lot of these texture. You can see all these like, uh, you know, the pattern on the paper. Uh, that's pretty obvious because when I pull um, the masking tape off, I wasn't very gentle. So I pull off quite a lot of that. So be very careful. And then I think another issue I have is of course with painting all these lines. So if you are like into um, very detailed things, I'm gonna use like very fine brushes to paint all these fine lines. You, you will see all these skip. But if you're the kind who just paints, like you do draw lines and then you just paint color over, I think this is okay. It's a little bit more, more special. Like if, if you're really bored with having one patch of color you know, by just having a, a textured cut paper like this, um, you can actually see that there is some variation, even though there's just one single color wash. Um, this is just a kind of a first impression video because I think I haven't really used this paper except for this one over here where I attempted to paint it um, in a more watercolor style, like uh, with a bit of more details. I'm still not totally convinced um, that my, uh, what I think, uh, is is, is going to re represent my final thoughts about it. So, um, in, in, you know, just, just to kind of summarize the first impression that I have of this paper, very interesting texture, nice granulation, kind of do quite well in, in lines. So you don't really get like very bad feathering. You don't get uh, bleeding through. Bad point being the surface being quite delicate. Um, you can't do much lifting. You can't do too much layering, too much water work. You can't scrub, like try to scrub stuff out. Um, and the, the texture is very obvious. The grits that you see is very obvious. Um, and also because the, the surface is so delicate um, that you, you, you know, you can get like um, the paper coming out, coming off if you apply like masking fluid or if you use a masking tape um, for, for the borders. So I think in, in the future, if I will try to actually use, uh, do a watercolor, uh, do an ink and wash an urban sketch, a quick one, uh, without much like playing around too much with the watercolor, just to see how it, it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you like to see similar content. I'd like to thank again uh, Viviva for sponsoring this sketchbook. I am an ambassador for them and I will be creating videos for them for uh, next five, six months. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about the colors, if you have any questions about the, the products, do let me know and I can ask them and or I can request for more products for review, okay? So yeah, um, see you again in the next video. Um, have a great week ahead, great month ahead. Bye-bye.